Hi guys, my name is Ash, you'll know me as Brom18, welcome to another instalment of our FIFA 22 Tactics series. This is a series where I show you how to recreate real tactics so they all work in game. Today we are focusing on Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool tactics, currently the most highly requested tactic for me to cover on the channel. So we're going to get our teeth stuck into it today. First, before we get into any of that, here is a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. For the foreseeable future, I'm partnering with Aniba. Aniba.com is a new online gaming marketplace which offers over 20,000 digital products such as video games and DLC codes, with the library of products expanding all the time. Aniba looks to provide you the best deals on the market for all of its products, whether they're new or old, and with an excellent Trustpilot score, you can rest assured that your service is safe and secure. Aniba also offers a 24-7 live support service, should you have any concerns or issues with your purchase. Use the code BROMA18 at checkout to get 3% off of all of your purchases. And a massive thank you to Aniba for supporting the channel. So let's talk about the system itself. Well, it's very much, as we know, highly intense. It requires a lot of energy, requires a lot of effort. Um, you know, pace is very important, stamina. Um, you know, it's very physical um, and it's very much embodiment of that modern German coaching philosophy, that counter pressing, that zonal style. Um, so, you know, we've got one that, that could work very well. I personally struggled with this tactic a little bit, um, but bear in mind, I do use my personal custom sliders. So if you're looking in the gameplay uh, above me, um, you will notice some changes in gameplay as well. If you're new to this series, first things first, I will show you any position changes, of which there are a couple, then we'll talk about the tactics, um, and then we'll go into the instructions. I also explain why they do things as well, just to give you guys a little bit of context. So, first things first, let me show you about the position. So it's a 4-3-3 holding, we've got that flat central midfield free, which we're going to go into more detail a bit later on. The only position changes you need to do are the two fullbacks. You actually change these to left wing back. And and right wing back now it's not as fundamental to do this in FIFA 22 but we definitely have to do this for this system because of the actual roles of the fullbacks what we know in this system is how just important they are to the way Liverpool play they are the biggest creative outlets it isn't actually the central midfielders they are there to fill in the gaps for the fullbacks with Alexander Arnold and Robertson you've got two highly um, I guess all-rounded fullbacks, just very talented, and so they are a massive part of what they can do. They're going to get crosses into the box. They also take a lot of the set pieces, if not all of the set pieces, other than penalties, I guess. Um, and you know, ultimately, they've very, very demanding role in this system. So you want them both at wing back. It gets them further forward. It gets them into the game more. Um, you know, it gets them wider as well onto the touchline. You want to create as much space for them as possible um, so that you get the opportunities to cross and to run into, etc. Um, and also you'll find them getting into the box a little bit more on top of that, particularly Andy, Andrew Robertson, um, you know, who will sometimes get into those advanced areas in the box in, in crossing situations. So then, that's it for the position changes. Next up, let me talk to you about the uh, tactics. First things first, defensively, we have press after possession loss, replicating a counter-pressing style, and that's what they do. A lot of people confuse this with Liverpool, um, sort of confusing them to be, I guess, that extreme pressing team who are going to relentlessly press you all the time. Not quite the case. They do try and win it high at the pitch when they lose a ball, but then after a little bit, if they don't manage to do that, then they will bed back in. And what that does is that allows them to counter on teams more. And that's very, very important because we also know how deadly they are on the counter attack. But we'll talk about that very, very shortly. The width is down to 10. Bear in mind on your sliders, you might be different. So for me, for example, in my sliders, we've got the width narrower. So you'll find my players even more narrow than what usually be. But as a general consensus, you want your team to be compact and stop them playing through you. Yes, it gives the opposition the ability and more space down the sides, but they can't hurt you as much. If they're going to score, they've got to play it centrally. So at some point, they've got to try and combat that compact shape. So make sure this is narrow. With the depth, it's up to 90. We know how high Liverpool play uh, their lines. 
line and the way they can get away with it is because of the physical upside of these defenders you know whoever they play maybe not so much Matty but Matty isn't the first option you know Van Dijk we know how pacey and strong he is you've got the likes of Canate you've got Gomez in there and obviously the fullbacks who are very energetic and have got pace as well so the fact that it's 90 allows you to do this now what we have done in past videos is if you find yourself being exploited a bit more you can lower this down to 70 um, in which case it will still be a high line but they drop off a little bit just to give you a bit of leeway but if you want to try and replicate that press as much as possible um, and you want to try and get them playing on the front foot as much as possible then move this up to 90 take take a risk you know you, you have to on FIFA anyway because defending is so hard um, so you may as well go for it uh, so let's move on to the other side of the ball now offensively build at play this is actually unbalanced i really tinkered with this throughout testing of this tactic trying to get the right sort of um you know option and i really settled on balance because what happens is is ideally we would have liked slow build up because they have become more possessionally orientated since their league title win because teams have really tried to um, you know, force them to have to play through the thirds more than, you know, committing and letting them hit them on the counter-attack. Um, but the problem is you get less emphasis on that quick burst, that quick counter-attacking system. But you also want a bit of emphasis on being able to play through the thirds because at some point they will have to and they do have to. So with balance, you get really the best variation um, as possible. This is the best way to replicate it in game. With chance creation, this is on forward runs, trying to replicate the front three, um, you know, just doing what they do best, running in behind, creating lots of movement. Um, it also helps to do it with the fullbacks as well. What you find is them getting forward a bit more and again, replicating that role that we were talking about earlier um, with them getting into the box and getting into those advanced areas. On to the width next. This is up to 70, which makes your team very, very wide. This is very important because this is what Liverpool do. They stretch the play so well. Um, they really try to get the opposition to open the gaps. And what that does then is when the opposition starts showing gaps in between their defence, it allows the wingers to cut inside and angle their runs in between um, you know the gaps um, so again it's trying to play into that front three that real strength of the team really trying to open up the opposition as much as possible in addition it also plays into how you know Liverpool cross the ball quite a lot and that's a big part of their game they try and stretch a play with their central midfielders as well again with this on 70 and being wider it's going to allow you to replicate that more with players in the box, this is up to seven, which means you're going to have three, roughly four. So we have the front three getting into the box, and you will either get either a fullback, maybe, maybe, but very rarely a central midfielder. You will see it occasionally. Not so much that I've seen this season, but generally up until this season, we saw occasionally a central midfielder come in. But if not, hopefully one of the fullbacks will get into the box. Bear in mind, the other wing back is probably going to be the one crossing the ball. Uh, so hopefully that fullback will come in. But with seven, you get a bit of variation because as you can see, it's mainly three in the box and, and possibly a fourth. With corners and free kicks, both up to four. Not a lot to say here. Um, one thing I will say is in terms of their corner taking, um, Alexander Arnold and Robertson obviously take the corners. Usually what they will do is they will both take out swinging corners, which means if it's a right sided corner, Alexander Arnold takes it on his right foot and it will swing outwards. And the same with Robertson over on the other corner. That's something they do I struggled to master that one in FIFA yet. I'm better at doing in swingers. Uh, but if you're able to do out swinging corners, then uh, by all means go for it because that is what they do. So let's move on to the player instructions then. Uh, we'll start off with the keeper and we'll work our way through the field. And I'll just give you a little bit of context through each one as well. With Alisson, very self explanatory. As we know, he's a sweeper keeper because you're playing that high line. He does come out. Um, and he does clear balls. Same with comes to crosses as well. Very aggressive. Um, we see in a lot of these top teams nowadays how the keeper's just constantly trying to play on the front foot, taking risks, really helping out their defence. It is very, very handy, particularly as I've spoken about in recent videos, that the AI is now starting to cross the ball in a bit more. That is really, really handy as well. With the two centre-backs, you don't actually need to change anything here. Um, one thing that I did... Uh, sort of 
mix with, I guess, and experiment with uh, in testing was conservative interceptions. And the reason being is that what you'll find is, say Van Dyke, for instance, when he gets one-on-one -on -one with an attacker and they're running at him with the ball, he will often, rather than commit, he'll keep backing off, backing off, but just within a yard or two, um, to allow them to run at him and they, they have to he forces them to try and take it past him in which case he backs his physical ability to outstrength them and body them and, and run with them as well but what it does is it then has an impact on your press you don't find him stepping out as much really trying to intercept the ball um, so we actually move this back to normal you can move to conservative if you wish to try and replicate that um, but I kept this to normal because I found it it did just replicate the role a little bit better with the fullbacks, we've got these on join the attack and overlap. I don't need to go into this one too much. We know how these guys play, but very much they're the ones, again, um, you know, in the widest positions in the pitch, really stretching the opposition and stretching your lines as well. On to uh, Fabinho, next in this holding midfield position. First thing starts with defensive behaviour, cut passing lanes. I talk at the start of the video about Jurgen Klopp and this tactic being this modern German coaching philosophy. Well, part of that is this zonal marking. They're very big on that. They believe that is the way forward. And that's what we see with Liverpool. He's very much trying to cut the passing lanes. And what that does is it limits the opposition Obviously not in just in terms of their passing, but also their movement as well. If he's at a closer angle to the player in possession, there's a player behind him trying to make runs, they're going to have to cover more ground, whereas he can follow them as well without having to actually physically man-mark him and it really take it out of him. So they kind of kill two birds with one stone by limiting the pass and still cutting out the man as well. Attacking support is stay back while attacking. Very, very important. Make sure that he's filling in the gaps. We're going to talk about the two central midfielders in a minute as well. But, um, you know, these guys are there as that flat central midfield free to protect the rest. And we'll speak about it more very, very shortly. Finally, with defensive position, it's on cover centre. You don't want him being dragged out wide. One, it's the job of the two central midfielders in front of him um, to really come into those wide areas when they're protecting Alexander-Arnold and Robertson. But also, you bear in mind that in this game so far, um, at least as of recording this, um, it's quite easy for the opposition to find a lot of space in the central areas when they're attacking. Um, so you don't want your central midfielders being dragged out. You want to try and man that area as much as possible. So what about the two central midfielders then? Well, they both have exactly the same roles um, and they're generally fairly similar players. Let me speak to you about this. So stay back while attacking and stay on the edge of the box of the cross as well. So what these central midfielders' his role is in these in this team is one provide protection for the front three and also the fullbacks as well these fullbacks are so advanced that someone has got to plug those gaps otherwise it's going to be very easy for the opposition to counter on them so that's what they do they are there to fill that role um, and really protect them be that engine uh, in midfield two you'll also find and we'll speak about it a bit more is that the front three won't always be tracking back. You want to try and keep them in positions to counter-attack and hit the opposition early on the break, hit them with through balls. So the role is also to protect them as well. Because these guys aren't really committing that much, it means they'll be in a better position to fill in the gap. Also, they enable them to recycle possession better as well because you've got those those three there, um, you know, as a flat pair, as a flat trio, it's going to allow you to do that. What you will find, though, is with positioning freedom, both of these guys are on drift wide. So why are they on drift wide? Well, what you tend to find is that in order to try and stretch the opposition, we spoke about it earlier, how they want to create a lot of space, um, they will do it with the centre midfielders as well. Often what you find is a centre midfielder, sometimes Curtis Jones, um, you know, you can put him in this role as well. His roles are exactly the same. Same with Harvey Elliott as well, who was in before he got injured. Um, they're often going to come into those wide areas. So one, give support to a fullback. What it does is a fullback can give it to them and then they can run on. And then the centre midfielder returns it to them and they got themselves in a better position running in behind the defensive line. Two, it's also going to stretch the opposition even more because all of a sudden, if you've got a centre midfielder coming out wide, then what are the opposition going to do? Either they're going to leave that centre midfielder free or their centre midfielder has got to come out and track yours and all of a sudden there's a lot of space in the middle and then it allows someone like Roberto Firmino, who's playing as a false nine, to drop into that 
that space that's been vacated and then you're really cooking on gas you get him on the ball you're in those central areas with a bit of space all of a sudden you've got options to play it in behind go for goal yourself you know you're really cooking on gas finally with defensive position cover wing as we've just spoken about it for being you know these guys will come out when they uh, when they need to in order to fill the gaps for, for the two fullbacks that have been left. Right then, let's talk about the front three. Um, starting off with both of the wingers, both of them in terms of their defensive support are on basic, so sometimes they're going to trap back, but not all the time. And the reason why is that these guys are going to be the, on the last, last man and really the last line of attack to instigate that deadly counter-attack that we see so often with Liverpool. Sometimes you're going to find these guys staying forward and really occupying the, the opposition's defence and being able to run in behind. It's going to allow deeper line playmakers like Henderson, like Thiago, to really play killer passes 40 50 60 yards alexander arnold is another one and they can play over the top to these guys who are running in behind and speaking of that getting behind on support runs but also cut inside on chance creation as well so that they'll angle their runs and this is going to play into Firmino when we get into him because he'll be dropping off so they're going to want to try and vacate that spent central space plus you have the fact that both of these are obviously on their inverted foot so Mane is right footed coming cutting in from the left and Salah is left footed cutting in from the right so it's going to allow you to get them on their stronger foot as well really provide that goal threatening option Finally, with support on crosses, as we've already spoken about, all three of these are going to be on getting to the box for the cross. So, on to Firmino. So, we've already spoken about his attacking runs. He's on false nine. That's what's going to allow you, with this flat central midfield three, where obviously you've, you've got none of them in the advanced areas, could be harder to build up. He's what enables you to complement that. Because he's a false nine, he'll drop into those advanced pockets um, in those areas higher at the pitch and allow you to play there. And what it does then, as we've just alluded to, is Salah and Mane can cut inside and occupy the opposition defence and he drops off. Very much, we've seen it so much, so often. That's what effective false nine systems do, is they'll have one dropping off and the wingers will capitalise and run in behind. Um, and then that's really when you start to mess with the opposition defensive line. With the Paul runs, he's on stay central. Don't want him drifting out wide because he's very much going to occupy that space that we've just spoken about. And defensive support is come back on defence. What you find with Firmino, he's a very hard worker and he, he does track back and that is part of the role as well. Because you're going to get Mane and Salah not always tracking back, sometimes staying forward, someone's got to fill in for that. Otherwise, you're going to put a lot of demand on your midfield three to fill in those gaps. So Firmino will actually track back and it's also going to allow you to get him onto the ball more and again, start playing through him as well because he's, he's a creative player. In terms of any of the other roles, for example, what happens when Firmino doesn't play and they have Diogo Jota in? Well, you saw me do this in a gameplay if you've been glancing at it every so often. Uh, what you will find is... Jota can either do the false nine or he'll be mixed. Now, I actually stuck with him as the false nine because I thought he works better on game. You can go for mixed as well because, again, he's a bit more pacey than Firmino, so they will try and exploit them runs in behind when they need to. Um, plus, you've got someone who's, who's obviously less of a target. He's not an out-and-out an out central player. He's really a winger, um, so do bear that one in mind. With the other central midfielders, they're very much the same. The likes of Curtis Jones, Oxlade Chamberlain, uh, Harvey Elliott, should be somewhere here. He was really playing in the central midfield. Um, you know, these guys, their role is, is pretty much exactly the same when they do come into central midfield. So that's one worth bearing in mind as well. It's also the same for when, say, someone like Jordan Henderson um, is playing at holding midfield, which he sometimes does. And, you know, I actually think he's, he's probably better there than central midfield. Um, you know, except he plays more of a deep line playmaker role. Um, you know, he does have slightly higher technical ability um, in this. He's got better passing and, than Fabinho, etc., better vision. Um, so, you know, that's going to allow you um, to replicate that deep line playmaker role more. Perhaps you'll have more success. Perhaps that's something I should have tried, actually, in the testing. I didn't really mess with that. Um, but, yeah, that is an option for you as well. So if you've got any questions about the tactic, make sure to get at me in the comment section. Let me know, and I will get back to you. Check out any of the other videos on my channel. We've got a Borussia Dortmund career mode series ongoing a realistic one really enjoying that so check that one out as well as all of my other tactics videos on top of that we have also doing football manager 2022 videos on my second channel Brahma ball i'll leave a link to that in the description so make sure to check them 
out. Also, check out Aniba. Use the code BROMA18 for a 3% discount on your purchase. The link to them are also in the description. And check out any of my affiliate links. They are also in the description. Links to all of my gear, my custom gaming PC parts, my consoles, games, all that good stuff. Uh, you know, gives the channel a little kickback when you buy something. And it's a great way to support the channel. Finally, give me a follow on Twitter and most importantly, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload. On that note, we're going to finish it off there. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I will see you soon. Come on, come on.